Ooh, you know when you get older, you can't go on a swing or anything? Woo! Wow, that's amazing. So today, we're going to make Change Your Life Chicken. What it is basically is a spatchcocked or spatchock chicken. The big discussion is where does the word spatchcock or spatchock come from? It's believed that it comes from dispatch the cock. That seems unlikely to me. However, having the word cock in a chicken dish makes sense. Removing the C is probably because of as the word progressed through history. Anyway, spatchocking, what does it mean? Basically, when you cook a chicken, the breast and the legs cook at a different time, different speed. So what, what you're doing by flattening the chicken is making it possible for it to cook evenly. Then we're also going to do a preparation to it that's going to make it perfect every single time. The last time we did this, I had the butcher do it. I know how to do it now. I might mess it up, but I know how to do it. If you do ask your butcher to do it for you, you have to remember to tip your butcher. And you know what you can do that's really helpful is watch him or her spatchcock it. Ask, can I, well now it's difficult with the masks and everything, but can I, can I watch you do this? Because you'll learn so much from them. Don't forget, they studied really hard to be a whole animal butcher. So it's good to learn from them. And always, of course, TYB. So the first thing you're going to do is take a quarter. This is a half sheet pan. I would use a quarter sheet pan. Uh, line it with tin foil and put a, a like a cookie a cake rack on it. Okay, set that aside. Here's your chicken. Trim the unnecessary fat pieces. I have a very sharp knife and I have my chef master in case I need to sharpen it. Then I'm gonna turn it over. Now running down the back is the backbone. Now a lot of people think that's the back. That's actually the front of the animal, okay? This is the back. Here is the tail and here is the neck. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not the most pleasant thing on the planet. And that really made was worse for him, her. So what you're gonna do, set your chicken upright like this. And you're gonna take your knife and you're just gonna cut down the backbone like this. Try to stay off the actual bone so you can get the knife through. Okay, take a look inside, make sure you're doing it right. Now, this chicken I've made probably 25 times already this summer. Brandon, for instance, got a lot of these chickens. And then do it exactly the same on the other side. Now, it's easier because you have one side open. Make your cut. Butchers will take the, the ribs out. I leave the ribs in because I'm not really sure how to get the ribs out. Cutting, cutting, cutting. There's the backbone, okay? Set that aside. Set the chicken like this, and you're gonna press down on the breast, which essentially flattens it. To most people, that's a spatchcock chicken. It's flat, but we can do better. This blade bone here, uh, I leave it in. Kevin at Hudson and Charles would take it out because they're much better than me. But what I'm gonna do is expose the bottom of it the bottom part of the blade. This is butchers all over America are howling at me right now. So that it lays a little bit flatter. So all I did was free the bottom of this. If you have the desire to, you can cut out this blade. If you want to leave the wings on, you're going to take them like this and tuck them under like that so that your bird is completely flat in your roasting tray. I take the wings off because I use the wings to make sauce, which is the other big amazing thing I'm gonna show you today. Just get a big knife, okay? And it comes right off. Voila, spatchcock chicken, wings separate. 
We're now going to season this chicken. What I would suggest is that you do this, if you can, two days before you want to cook it. I've made a lot of these this summer, okay? One day is fine and three hours is fine. Two days, I've noticed, it's a little bit more special. You're going to take your tray that you lined with tin foil, and I'm just going to pick her up and put her on the rack. Take the backbone and set it there, and the two wings. Because even though they're not in our main chicken to be eaten, they are in the sauce. Wait until I tell you that, you're gonna die. All right, now your hands are contaminated. So you're gonna take salt and dump it out on the tray. You're not gonna put your hands in the salt. You're gonna put so much salt on this that you're gonna think, I've gone mad. What happens in the two days is the salt dry brines the chicken. When you take it out, you'll be a little weirded out because the skin will be contracted and the flesh will be dry, almost dry. The best chicken you've ever had in your life. David Schaefer, who's had a lot of chicken, he said, Randy, that's the best chicken I've ever had in my life. And I said, not as good as Barbudo, a great restaurant that had a famous chicken. And he said, it's Definitely as good, if not slightly better. So flip her over and you're gonna salt. Now this side is a little bit, tiny bit less important, but I'm already gonna put more salt than you could ever imagine, I'm sure. You don't have to pepper the inside, but I will. Flip her over. You're gonna salt the living hell out of this thing. Now this is how I made my um, turkey this year. It actually comes from that Amazing Bon Appetit, Reg, the Thanksgiving Bon Appetit. That was like the best they've ever produced, I think. Did you guys hear about the editor of Bon Appetit? Did you hear about that? Yeah, he sat down. Yeah, no comment. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little on these pieces also. Now, you might think that's insane. How can you put this much salt? Trust me, most of it washes off. I'm using fancy salt because I don't have kosher salt. You should use kosher salt for this. It's a little bit more sticky. And then I'm actually pressing it on in some cases, okay? Now, you can, you can add to the, the dry brine any flavor you want. I've been using salt, pepper, and Japanese togarishi that I love, right? It gives us sort of a nice color, so I just put a little togarishi on there, which is essentially cayenne, sort of like dried chilies and uh, sesame seeds. Now, I've made this where it's lemon chicken, where I've grated over it lemon zest, and put lemon in the sauce. You can put anything, curry powder, whatever strikes your fancy that day. Now here's the secret. This goes in your refrigerator with no wrapping, just like this, open for two days, if you can do that. One day is fine, and honestly, three hours is fine. But it's going in the fridge uncovered. But through the magic of television, I happen to have one right here. So this has been in the fridge for two days. Maybe you can see. The, the skin has pulled back. If I touch the skin, it's dry. Pick up your rack and set it to one side. Throw out this tin foil. See all the liquid that landed in there? Uh, you don't want to steam your chicken, right? None of us felt like going to Mr. Lee's. So I'm using these weird pre-cut things. I've never seen these before. I must have bought them, but can we talk about Mr. Lee and Mrs. Lee, the Lee family, who kept my deli Bleecker Farms open for this whole freaking disaster? Thank you, Mr. Lee, and the neighborhood thanks you. Uh, I would heat your oven, 420 convection, 440 normal, and imperative that your chicken come to room temperature. Do not cook chicken out of the refrigerator. It's not gonna work because the top will brown before the center cooks. Never cook meat out of the refrigerator. I'm gonna take the wings off because I'm gonna use these for a special concept in classic cooking called sauce. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in the oven and I'm gonna use a meat thermometer. There's no shame in using a thermometer, okay? Ch chicken is hard to tell if you touch it, you can't really tell. So I'm using a ThermoPro, the best. Um, and I'm just gonna put this in the breast and if you're a decent cook, you'll be able to tell if you position it correctly. Just by looking at it, you'll be like, that temperature's not right. You take it out and you put it in the right spot. You don't want it touching the bone and you don't want it sticking out. 
This has been out for a long time since the, the girls came this morning. It's still only 60 degrees inside. I'm now going to put this in the oven, but guess what? You're not going to see that because we don't have multiple camera angles. So when I leave the frame, I'm putting it in a 420 convection oven. To make sauce, you always want to have in mind that the base of the sauce is the thing that you're saucing, the basic flavor. So if you're making beef, beef trimmings. If you're making fish, fish trimmings. We're making a chicken sauce, but we're going to use, I just wanted to show these off. Lynn was like, why are these in the shop? That's from my garden. You are going to strain it. It is a little bit fancy, but what that means is you don't have to worry so much about your cuts. So I'm just going to cut kind of big pieces like that. See, like big chunks. Want to take a garlic, really just smash it with your hand. You don't even need to take it out of the skin. I don't have any garlic, <laughs> but you can just take a clove of garlic and just smash it. You can take a shallot and just crush it. You don't have to take the skin. This is the amazing thing. These are cleaned because they're so muddy when I get them home. They're rough cut to say the least. Oh, I learned something really interesting. I learned this from uh, Thomas Keller from his master class. If you use a mirepoix and you, that means that you're removing it, meaning you're straining the sauce and you won't see the mirepoix. You know how we say for cacovan or whatever, simply look at the recipe. We say uh, rustic or country style means you leave the mirepoix in, but actually there's a name for that, uh, which I'm gonna remember in a second. Anyway, we're, we're gonna strain it out. So the cut doesn't matter. We have the backbone and we have the wings and we have this and we're going to make sauce. Don't be scared. You can make a sauce where everybody's going to be like, who is this person? First, hot pan, olive oil. That's right. So heat up your pan. Oh, there's a big storm outside. Holy shit. This is the, sorry. This is the kind of rain that floods the theater. And we just had a big flood. This is not good. This is the kind of rain that floods the theater. Lynn creates the properties, all the things the actors touch. And the flood, the prop table from the Washington Square was here and the water stopped here. Thank in the God. Ceiling. Everything was untouched. Okay. Little olive oil in the bottom. And I'm going to essentially get the essence of these chicken wings, but I'm going to wait until it's hotter. Kelly, uh, I wanted to tell you, I'm rooting for Shea Coulee. Even though her runway was meh recently, I think Shea could win, but secretly I would like Juju B to win. We're talking about RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars. Okay, here we go. This should be hotter, but it doesn't really matter. It should make a louder noise. And you're basically going to fry these off. Now this makes a little bit of smoke, but you want it to get sort of leave nastiness in the bottom because you're, you're making an essence of it, okay? And this will make smoke. So if you turn off your smoke alarm, but just remember to turn it back on. Flip them over. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. I'm gonna put in our rough chopped onion. So you see how this is making like a nastiness of chicken? Let this almost burn. I'm making like a soul of chicken. So now these are getting slightly burned. And now I'm going to tell you the sauce maker's secret. Vermouth. There's a common cooking liquid, a chef -y liquid called verju, which is a, it's a kind of wine, but I swear by this for chicken. If it was beef, I would use red wine. I'm going to deglaze the pan with vermouth, meaning I'm going to pour vermouth in here. Then I'm going to use tongs and I'm going to sort of clean the bottom of the pan by cleaning it with the chicken like this. All the bits are coming up into my sauce. See? Here's a huge bouquet garni, which is basically thyme, marjoram, and uh, parsley. I'm just going to throw that in. Now, once the vermouth has cooked down a little bit, you can deglaze again. 
If it's a beef sauce, you could flambe at this stage when it's drier. Put in a little whiskey, flambe it, even though Reggie, I still don't know how to do it by tilting the pan. Except Regina and I discovered something. The reason why I may not be able to flambe like a chef is because um, I'm not using enough liquor. They use much more liquor when they flambe. So when they tilt the pan, there's enough liquor in there to ignite. I have to use a lighter, which is not very chef-y, but I'm not a chef, so it doesn't matter. Most of the vermouth has re gone away, reduced. Uh, now I'm gonna put in stock. Pour in a lot, because it's gonna, you're gonna reduce this, and the worst thing is not having enough sauce. A reducing boil is a rolling boil. Otherwise, it's not gonna reduce. It's just gonna boil for hours, okay? You want it to be actively boiling. Now, because we're shooting today, I might reduce it for a little bit and then uh, finish it later because otherwise Lynn has to stand there filming me. Take a picture of Lynn filming me. Oh, I have that. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit to reduce. Over reducing, you know, it's better if you don't do that, but you can always add more stock if you over reduce it. Never serve an over reduced sauce. It will taste burnt and gummy and nasty. Um, how can you tell? Taste it. Is the consistency the consistency you want? Um, you want to add a little seasoning at this point, a little salt, even though remember there's salt on your chicken wings, and a little pepper. I'm not going to lie to you, this is, this is, will up your game. Okay, so I'm letting it boil, so you can just see what it looks like, what I mean by a reduction boil. And this is not matignon. Oh. I want to suck in the blood. Who are you more scared of, Wolfman or Dracula? Wolfman. Wolfman, 100%. Wolfman. As I told you guys before, I never understood why people wouldn't want to be a Dracula. You can turn yourself into smoke, you never die, and you can take the shape of any animal or person. What is the downside? So that is a pretty serious reduction boil. If I was boiling it at this level, I would stay right here. And I'm gonna let this reduce until it's the consistency I want. Then we're gonna do a beurre monté. Holy shoot! Imagine if you were a bug. It wouldn't be a fun time right now. I'm gonna strain this, even though it's not fully reduced. Now, I'm just gonna warn you, David and I have been unsuccessful of getting all the sauce I made into the pitcher on the table, but we're gonna try. So, I'm gonna pour this into a strainer, and then I'm gonna put the, the junk in this thing also. And I'm gonna kinda of press on this until there's no more drips, right? Now, if you were hungry, you could eat these chicken wings. They're fully cooked. I'm going to pour this back in the pan. And I'm going to continue reducing it because it's a teensy bit thin. You're close. So think about your, your meal. That, the chicken has to rest. So really, you're at your leisure. You can make this in the afternoon and re-warm it for dinner. Don't forget to check your seasoning. I was going to make brie with um, walnuts and whiskey and figs for Eric and Spencer, who celebrated both of their birthdays and their anniversary. So, just like with the jam, you want to look at the bubbles. See how the bubbles break very quickly? It means the sauce is not thick. They, they pop. You'll know you're getting close when the bubbles take a teeny bit longer to pop. At the very end, we're going to do a beurre monté, which literally means you put butter in the sauce. But you know when you go to a restaurant and the sauce is silky and shiny? That's because it's beurre monté. French chefs all over the world are killing themselves, committing Harry Perry. <gasps> How can she say it's a beurre monté? <gasps> That's what they're doing. So this is pretty much ready. It's reduced. The um, bubbles are slower to pop. 
See, there's bubbles resting. It's because they're thicker. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a spoonful of butter, like this, and drop it in. And you'll see magic. It becomes silky and satiny and beautiful. I'm going to try to put the sauce in here. Oh. Hmm. It actually was easy. Now I'm going to try and get this in this. Eh? Sauce? Our chicken has reached 165. I'm going to take the chicken out. Please remember this is boiling hot. This should rest for at least 10 minutes, if not more. Gently tented. We made it. Beautiful spatchot chicken that you rested for at least 10 minutes. You have your sauce ready, rich and delicious. You can serve this like this, or you can hack it into pieces, kind of like this. You know, and serve it. Look how juicy it is. It's insanity. Basically, this chicken is 100% foolproof, and you will always get a perfectly cooked bird, which is amazing. If, especially if you have a lot of people. Change your life chicken. Don't tell anybody the secret except everybody because everybody should be able to do it with the sauce. seasons they go round and round and the painted ponies go up and down <laughs>